calling in uh, Dr. Fregel is back. I'm so sorry I couldn't have a video posted for a while. This morning, we will be uh, introducing us to some things. We'll be looking at register of thefts, common errors, and then we'll have us get familiar with some expressions in English language. Very quickly, let's start with thefts. Theft is a noun. It is the act of stealing. Now, I, I, I know this particular um, thing I want to do this morning because I intend to um, get us familiar with some things. Now, theft is a noun. It means the act of stealing. Thief or thieves. Thief is singular. Thieves is plural. So, um, this is the person that steals. All right? Now, steal is a verb, stole is the past tense, and stolen is the past participle. But all of these things are, are things I know you are well familiar with, and that's why it's not my main interest. My interest is the word secretly. How do you steal? Now, I remember when I was very young, if I want to steal um, the meat from the pot, what I do is I walk still till. When you walk still till, that means you walk, you walk secretly. That's the word still till. You want to steal, you don't want people to know. Even the dog, there are some dogs I hate. There are some dogs that when you open them, they will shout, Gah. No, those are not kind of dogs you steal. You don't steal them. You will need this dog that will cooperate with you. So as if you move, you move with it. So uh, so you have surreptitiously, it's the same thing as secretly. The way you walk so that your footsteps will not be heard. And still till it, the same thing, fortunately. Now this Three words are synonyms of secret, usually for things we do in secret. And one of them is stealing, of course. So that's why I decided to get us familiar with these three words. They are not, they are not hard at all. Alright, so um, the next thing on the board you can see here is common errors. Common errors, alright. Now, we often hear people say, send thoughts for send off. Which one is correct? Is it supposed to be send Foot or send off. So I took it for myself to get us um, clear on these two words. Send foot is to emit something. When you send foot something, you emit, you, you let out. All right. So for instance, when you have something like she sent foot a loud cry, she let out a loud cry. All right. So it is just if you vomit, you could, you could actually have that as send foot. You, you send forth and there's there's a power gene in your stomach. All right. Now, but send off is to dispatch something. Okay, you dispatch something in a mail. So if I send you a mail, I send off a mail to you. And then you could also mean to send somebody away. Now you can send somebody away maybe on an errand, or you can dismiss that person. You understand? Then the last one, which is very well familiar, is to beat farewell or goodbye. So when someone has sailed um, meritoriously and you want to bid that person farewell, you can say you want to send off. This is the ceremony. This is the ceremony of sending people off. This is the ceremony of bidding them farewell, which we usually um, have a whole lot of vocation on. That's about that. So this is correct. Please don't use send forth for, fair, for uh, sending people off. All right. Then we have these three words, continuous, continua, and continuous. I found it very hard to understand and believe that this word doesn't in English, in English lexicon. It is not existence. There's nothing like continuous. You can check your dictionary. These are the two words that we have. So continuous and continua, the two of them actually mean almost the same thing, without ceasing, without stopping. So when you say something is incessant, something is continuous. That means it continues for a long period of time. That is continuous and continuous. Uh, so, but this does not exist. I, I'm not bringing these two up to define them for you because I know you understand the definition. I am bringing this up to tell you that this does not exist in English. All right. So continuous, C-O-N-T-I-N-I-O-U-N is non-existent. Thank you. Then the next word is switch off. Now you can see me put the switch in brackets. The reason why I put it in brackets is because people tend to say this, that, okay, off the lights, on the lights. Please, you don't off or on the lights. You either switch off the lights or you switch on. The verb is switch. Okay, now take for instance, you want to have it in the past tense. He switched 
on the light. So if you have switched, you can have switched. It switched on the light. That's the first sense. But if you remove this switch and you have on, can you say it on? Can you add ED to on? No, you can't. On and off, out, all of them are prepositions. They cannot function as verbs and you should not treat them as such. So you should have switch off, switch on, put out. Just the same way you cannot say out the lights. So it's wrong to say switch off the lights. This is very common. We, we cannot, I'm not sure anybody makes this kind of mistake that out the lights. But for this, it is, people tend to make this kind of mistake a lot. On the lights, off the lights. So please, you don't on or off the lights. Thank you. All right, so the next part of um, this course is um, getting ourselves familiar with these expressions. We have hagil and agil. Now, there are two different words. Here we have the global sound pronounced hagil. And here we have agil. Now, when you have this kind of word, this is what you have in the market where people tend to, um, how much is this? It's 500 naira, let me pay 350. No, you can pay 400. That's agil. You are arguing for your enterprise. Right, but argue is when you argue, when you debate, when you disagree. You understand? So this, they are two different. This is actually an argument for price, usually for markets. All right. Then we come to postpone and prepone. I'm, I'm trying to rush this down because I intend to um, get us acquainted with what happened just last week with the PMS. All right. So postpone is to push something off. When you put off, when you reschedule something forward. You're supposed to have a meeting by four, and you tend to have to, okay, let's have it by five. That's postponed. We all know that. But this word is not very common, and that's the word prepone. Prepone is when you have a meeting by five, and you reschedule it backward, and you have it by four. That's prepone. You, you bring it back. So that's prepone. Then we come to friend. We all know that friend is an ally or a Well, and then the opposite will be enemy or fool. But this word is not so common. Fiend. It is pronounced fiend. Thin is another word for enemy, foe or adversary. All right. So the two of them, all you have to do is to remove the R and you are faint. So if you have a problem with spelling friend, you are going to find yourself spelling faint. So it's my friend, and you write F I E N D. You'll be pronouncing faint. All right. Then we come to unawares and unaware. Unawares is when you are taken by surprise, and I will give a scenario to explain this. And then okay, then uh, unaware is when you are not aware of something. Alright, then hot. Okay, so last week on Monday, I went to the fuel station to buy petroleum. Now, another word for petrol, not petroleum, rather, petrol. Petroleum is a crude oil. Petrol is a, um, the product we get from petroleum. PMS, premium motor spirit, is another word for petrol. So I went to get petrol, and at the fuel station, I, I, I thought I gave them 2,000 euros. And now I don't buy per liter, I buy per price. So I was like, just give me 2,000 euros worth of petrol. And to my, to my amusement, I got 4 liters. I was like, what happened? He said, ah, didn't I know that things are already costly and so first subsidy has been removed? So I was taken aback. That was me. I was taken by surprise. That was unaware. I was not aware of the situation. That's unaware. I'm not aware of what happened, but I was taken by surprise. So I was unaware that that was the situation. So he saw the now that what happened was hoarding. Hoarding was the filling station attendants and the owners were keeping fuel, even though they have not secured a new one. The the, the subsidy should work with the new oil they get, but they were already doing it on the one they have already. So that's what we call hoarding. When you keep something or and you want it to escalate, you want the price to increase before you start selling. So that was what happened. And then um done with hoarding. We come to this word now. This word can give us a bit of problem when we come to pronunciation. Now we have the word. It is not rendez vos. It is a French word, and in French you don't pronounce the last vowels consonant sound, so it is supposed to be pronounced rendezvous, something like this, something like this, rendezvous. So this is rendezvous. It means meeting or you meeting place. Now this very day I was talking about how you were supposed to have a meeting with a friend that was very close to the filling station around five o'clock. So I called him, bro, can I see you now? Because I will not be coming back to this place because of uh, fuel subsidy and the effect it has had on me. So I cannot afford to be wasting my resources. So that was rendezvous. So I shifted my meeting. It could be a meeting. If we are supposed to meet by 10, we'll say, okay, our meeting is by 10, our rendezvous is by 10. Then if it is a meeting place, it can also go with rendezvous. All right, so PMS, like I have said, is another word for petrol, premium, mortal, spurts. And then debt. Now, these two words are what we call homophones. Homophones are words that are pronounced the same way. All right, but they are not the same. There's a difference between homophone, 
This is death, and this is death. Now, this death is, of course, the, 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 the season of life, right? But this one means scarcity. You had to see the queue at the filling station that day. There were a lot of queue, and I was hoping, is it scarcity, is it death? But of course it wasn't. It was the hiking in price. All right, so but just for our information, the word death is another for scarcity, D D A R T H. Scarcity, lack or short supply, and it's also the another word for paucity. Thank you.